Good morning. Good morning, class. <coughs> My name is Pam Turner, and I will be the moderator for this morning's lecture. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school, not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States and certain other foreign countries. The Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce you the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joel Turner, and our President, Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of the physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles, not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Now, Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself is Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and he showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function 
of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The ten primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. Okay, so now I, I want to remind everybody to silence all electronics, uh, if you haven't done that already. And I, we do have some visiting brethren I just wanted to mention um, we want to welcome. We, um, we've had a couple of members from um, Cowdersport, Pennsylvania that are still with us again. We have doctors um, Kathy and Daryl Hewels. And then we also have a few members visiting today from the Orlando branch. We have Dr. Pauline Taylor and Dr. Nikki Johnson. We also have, um, we have Trudy Ann Martin from Jamaica visiting. Um, we're so happy to have you with us. And hopefully I didn't miss anyone. <laughs> and um, <laughs> we are going to have our class dedicated in prayer this morning by Dr. Pauline Taylor, visiting from Orlando. We um, are having our scripture reading from um, Dr. Sherry Williams, and our scripture this morning is Hebrews, the eighth chapter. We're going to have a musical selection by our visitors from Pennsylvania, Daryl and Kathy. This is not working. Is there a better one? Oh, wait, here we go. I'm going to try this one. Okay, Hebrew. I said that out of order, yes. Oh, well, yeah, after the prayer and then the scripture. Okay. Oh my God, I'm dropping everything. Jeez. <laughs> you can just hold this and talk about it. Good morning, class. Good morning. Good morning. Just want to just ask Yahweh to quiet our hearts and minds so that we will be able to appreciate this gospel being preached unto us at the end of this age. Father, we thank you that you've kept us safe. You've kept a guard around us. You've chosen each and every one of us to be here today, Father, so that we can continue to learn about you, about your divine purpose, pattern, and plan. Father, we thank you that you let us know that we can inherit eternal life now, not later. We thank you, Father, that you've chosen, like I said, chosen us to reveal this truth unto us with all the stuff that's going on in the world that you've kept us Focus on you to know that you are our peace, our joy. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you.
bow before your majesty. You're everything. There is no like you. Yahshua, you are so marvelous. Your glory outshines the sun. You are worthy of all the honor. You are the Son of God. There is no like you. You sacrifice your love so you can just know you. Your love is beyond compare. Your mercy endureth forever. so beautiful your attributes are more lustrous than gold thank you for giving us sight to see your splendor your loving nature is the greatest sight to behold there is none like you. We give our hearts, our minds, our hope to you. Yeah. We love you more than words can say. That love you shown for us is truly amazing. Nothing in this world can take your place. There is none like you. There is none like you. There is none like you. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association, Incorporated, reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. Hebrews chapter 8. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which Yahweh pitched and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if we were on earth, if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of Elohim when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. But now 
hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is a mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with it, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith Yahweh. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them their Elohim, and they shall be to me my people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know ye Yahweh, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. In that he saith, a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxed old is ready to vanish away. It's Hebrews chapter 8. All right, I would like to announce that the, for this morning's class, we're going to have a three-speaker format. And I would like to call our first speaker, which is a, she's been visiting with us for a bit now, a visiting brethren from the Kingston, Jamaica class, Dr. Karen Martin. Good morning, class. Good morning. It has always been a pleasure and a privilege to visit any one of the schools that Yahweh has set up and to give a testimony. And that's all we can do is just testify of this divine vision and revelation that we have become partakers of. And, um, you know, traveling from so far traveling from so far and we're here meeting various people it's as if we have known each other all our lives and that is because of the spirit that Yahweh has placed within our heart because um you know it says um we always says the Holy Spirit know the Holy Spirit and will not fight or go up against the Holy Spirit and it says where two or three are gathered in the name Yahshua, you know, it's it's good. Yes. So I really want to give Yahshua the thanks this morning, you know, that he is able to have me standing here to just give a testimony of how great he is. And, you know, so the scripture lesson, which is Hebrews, the eighth chapter. Can I have the first verse read, please? No, it's not. It's Hebrews. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Hebrews, the eighth. Hebrews 8 and 1. Mm -hmm. Now the things which he has spoken of is the sum. He said, no, read. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. It says, now of the things we have spoken, this is the sum. Read. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Thank you. I like to write. You notice it says, this is the sum. Mm -hmm. And, um... <laughs> What is the sum? S U M or the total. So what is the total or the sum? So do you see when Yahweh had um set up this vision? There's a prescribed way that you go about presenting it. Because if you had just come and read Hebrews 8, this is the sum. What is the sum? This is why he said to the law and to the testimony, if you speak not according to this word, and the word it's talking about is Yahweh, Elohim, it is because there's no light or understanding in them. And then it goes on, and um, Psalms 103, verse 7, it said, 
he made known his ways unto Moses and his actions unto the children of Israel. So before I get to the sum, let us go back to the, the writings of Moses and see what some of the things um, that we can come up with, which is the sum. Now, um, also, when you read um, where Yahshua said, you search the scriptures, John 5, 39, for in them scriptures you think you have eternal life, but he said, those scriptures, they are they which testify of me. So I want to get some foundation scriptures. Get me um, Exodus the third chapter. Exodus 3 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, mm -hmm. his dominion. He said, led the flock mm -hmm. to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Elohim, even to Horus. Read. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. So it says, Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, and while he was tending to his flock, he said, the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him. In a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. Read. And he looked. Mm -hmm. Behold, the bush burned with fire. Mm -hmm. and the bush was not consumed. So all he was seeing, according to there, he was seeing a bush. And it says, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Read. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Mm -hmm. Why the bush was not burnt. Mm -hmm. And when Yahweh saw... That he, well, it says, do you want me to read the King James or with the name? Go ahead with the King James. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see God, called unto him out of the midst of the bush, and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. Mm -hmm. And he said, Draw not near, hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet. So, thank you. So, based on what um, you're reading there, according to the King James Version, this bush was a very pretty, busy bush. <laughs> because right within the bush, it says the angel, is it the angel, it did it say the angel of the Lord, right? Yes. So you have the angel of the Lord that's appeared. Then it says God saw and the, the Lord saw and God called. No, Moses now turned aside, he said, you know, let me see what is happening. Read. And he said, Draw not near, mm -hmm. put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Mm -hmm. More, moreover, he said, I am <coughs> the God of thy father, the God of Abraham. Jump down to the 10th verse. I want to hear Moses ask him. Um, Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh. Read. That thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto God, who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Read. And he said, Certainly, I will be with So he assured Moses that I will be with you. Read. And this shall be the token unto thee. I want when Moses asked him for the name. Is it the? Thirteen. Thirteen. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto God, mm -hmm. Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? Thank you. So there it is telling you that God is not a name. So we are not the one in the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research that is putting emphasis on the name. When Moses, because if I'm sending, if Sherry is sending me to someone, Sherry has to give me a name. So you're sending me to Joel, you're going to say, tell Joel X, Y, Z. But it's, so here Moses is asking, now what is your name? Now if, if God was a name, Moses would not ask, what is your name, God? Because that would be stupid. And that's one, of the, that's one of the thing when I start, when I came into this school, it says Moses asked a very important question. What is your name? And that's one of the first things that you do when you meet someone. You introduce yourself. Because by now, everyone in here should know who the other person is. Because you, and you identify the person by their name. So he said, what is your name, God? Read. And God said unto Moses, mm -hmm. 
I am that I am. No, that's a limited statement. I am that I am. Mm -hmm. Because you couldn't even use that statement with me. Because when if I say I am that I am, what are you seeing? You're just seeing a lady here. I'm a mother. Mm -hmm. I'm a teacher. I'm an accountant. And I can go on and on and on. I'm a friend. So I am that I am is a limited statement. Read. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. I am hath sent me unto you. So he said, I am hath sent me unto you. Read. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, mm -hmm. hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Thank you. No. The first thing when you hear the, you know the is a definite article. And you don't put T-H-E in front of a person's name. Right. You can put it in front of the name if you're talking about a family collectively. For example, the Martins family, the Turner's family. But you don't say the Sherry. I'm, I'm not sure about the culture here, but the moment you started saying the in front of the person's name, it's like a disrespect. For example, I would say the one Sherry. You're going to ask, what do you have against me? You're referring to me as the one Sherry. So the is, you don't put TH in front of somebody's name. And moreover, he said, the Lord. Now, do we have first-time visitors in here today? Any first-time visitors? Okay. So, we have a... <laughs> Thank you. So, you don't put T-H-E in front of somebody's name. And Yahweh, Yahweh is so great. <laughs> Brethren, I tell you, Yahweh is so great. So, what I'm using here now, I'm going to use the King James Version of the Bible to show you that the name that was given to us, which is Lord God and Jesus Christ, they are false and they are erroneous and they are inconsistent. Right? So based on what? So the first person to have received the name of the creator was Moses. Moses, and don't tell me that, listen, I am 40 years old or 45 years old and I've been hearing other names before. Moses was 80 years old. Some of us in here, we have not reached 80 as yet. We might never live to see 80, some of us. So it's never too late. And it's, they always say it's better late than never. So here, according to the King James Version, and I'm going to do the, write it according to the King James Version. I hope the time will allow me since it's 3. Um, so according to Exodus 3, It says, you have the Lord. What's the name that was given? He said, the Lord God. Now, we know that Lord is not a name. And God is not a name. Lord is an English title. It means, ma and you can look it up in the dictionary. You can Google it. Because I hardly walk with Bibles anymore or, or, or dictionaries. Usually, you'd have to walk with them. You have the phone. Every information is at the tip of your finger. Yahweh has equipped us with that. So, he said, the Lord God. Lord is not a name. It's a title. It means master, ruler, owner, and it also means Baal. And you know about the four, 850 false prophets of Baal. God is not a name also. God is a title. Now, in England, you have the House of Lords to so show you the names that they attribute to the Creator. In England, you have the House of Lords. But a king in England is the highest. So you have king, and you would go to the prince. You have knights. You have duke. You have Earl, and this is the male, the, the male gender, that, the male that I'm talking about. So you have the king, the prince, the knight, the duke, the earl, lord is way at the bottom. Yeah. King James, King James who wrote the King James, or he is a credited um, writer for the King James version of the Bible. The title that King James chose for himself is higher than the title that he gave to the creator. Because in England, a king is higher than a lord. 
and person don't realize that when he told them in in philippians 2 and 9 that his name is above every name but the king is higher than a lord so this is telling you that you we yahweh has set aside a name for himself but nevertheless, we are going to continue with this name. When you look at God, God is a title. Originally, it's the title, it's an idol that the Germans used to worship. It's G-A-U-D, G-A-W-D, G-O-T-T, G-O-D-D. So each time, you know, English modernized, the language is modernized. When the Germans conquered the world, when the English conquered the world, all they did took over the same idols that the Germans worshipped. Right. And all they did was just drop one of the D and this is how we get our God. So if it was, if it was an idol 500 years ago, what do you think it is today? The same idol, nothing changed. Jehovah, which you might not see here, is a misapplication. J-E-H-O-V-A-H. Of the true name of the creator, which is Yahweh. Because there was no letter J in the Hebrew alphabet until today. So it is impossible to call him Jesus, Jehovah, or Jah. Somebody might ask, did you know that Jah is in your Bible, Psalm 68 and verse 4? Jah is in the Bible. That's mm -hmm. right. So it's impossible to call him Jesus, Jehovah, and Jah, because there was no letter J in the Hebrew alphabet. And not only that, this letter J is the last letter added to the English language alphabet. So after you have Z, you should have J. But if you notice, it comes right after the I. I tell you, this is a school, and we're not a church. And when you come here, you get some English, you get history, <laughs> you get science, you get mathematics. Yahweh will bless you. Yes, so here you have this. And this, is, and this is why they have the J. It's placed right after the I. And this is why when you hear, sometimes when you see words spelled, and you would see Isaiah, Instead of saying Y-A-H, they would have I-A-H, Isaiah. Yeah. All right, but let's move on. So we're, we have established here, according to King James Version, that the name that was given is the Lord God. All right, so here now, let us move on to Exodus 6 and verse 2. So we're going to see the consistency of this name, Lord God and Jesus Christ. Exodus 6 and 2. Mm -hmm. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, mm -hmm. I am the Lord. So God is continuing speaking and God said, I am the Lord. Read. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob mm -hmm. by the name of God Almighty. Mm -hmm. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. So here he's saying he appeared to the patriarchs before Moses as God Almighty, but by his name Jehovah, he was not known unto them. So we have established according to the King James Version in the law that the name is the Lord God, God Almighty, Jehovah. Get me Psalm 68 and verse 4. That's in the prophets. Psalm 68 and 4. Unto God, mm -hmm. praises to his name, mm -hmm. extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Jah, mm -hmm. and rejoice before him. No wonder the Rasta man can come. Have you ever heard of the Rastafarian religion? No one, everybody goes in the Bible and they will take something. It's like a supermarket. And whatever suits you, you take it and it fits you. So the Rasta man will come and he's, and you know, Rastafarian, it, the, the, that religion was um, originated in Jamaica, the rest of her with Selassie, mm -hmm. ja, mm -hmm. and rejoice before him. You can't blame them. Yeah. And we're not here blaming them either. Get me Malachi, get me Malachi um, 3 and verse 6. Malachi 3 and 6. Mm -hmm. For I am Yahweh. No, according to the King James Version. For I am 
Mm -hmm. I change not. I am the Lord. I change not. Now, according to the King James Version, we could have said God is a liar. Titus 1 and 2. And um, there are two scriptures that say it is impossible for God to lie. Mm -hmm. What's those two scriptures? Um, I know that we have um, designated readers. If somebody, if I can ask if anybody who can catch the scripture fast, mm -hmm. you can just assist and read, please, for me, please. Thank you. So Malachi 3 and 6, he says, I am the Lord. I change not. Now we know that's a lie. And Titus 1 and 2, it is said it is impossible for God to lie. Because here, Exodus 3 and, 3, Exodus 3 and 13, he gave 15, he gave Moses his name as the Lord God. Then in Exodus 6 and 2, he said he was God Almighty, but he was known as Jehovah before. Then Psalm 6, 8 and 4, he said his name is Jah. Then Malachi 3 and 6, and I could find in Psalms, Malachi 3 and 6, he says, I am the Lord, I change not. Right. Now that's showing you the inconsistency when these names are being applied in the Bible. But let's go to the Holy Name version and show you when the true names are being applied in the holy name, you will see the consistency and that his name is actually Yahweh. Get me Exodus 3 and verse 15 according to the holy name version. Exodus 3 and 15. Mm -hmm. And Elohim said moreover unto Moses. So Elohim is a title. So when Moses asks for the name, Moses knew him as, as El Shaddai. But Elohim is his title. So when he appeared unto Moses at the burning bush, he was telling Moses that I am Elohim, Yahweh Elohim. So Moses asked him, Elohim, what is your name? Because Elohim is not a name, it's a title. Right. And he said, Exodus 3.15, he gave Moses, go ahead, read. And Elohim said, moreover unto Moses, mm -hmm. thus, Shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. Yahweh, mm -hmm. the Elohim of your father. And listen, we human beings, mankind, is the only one that put their title before their name. Because it says it's Yahweh Elohim. We are the only one that put the title. Oh, I'm Mrs. Mm -hmm. So and so. Yahweh Elohim. And I, in class that I came to learn that, that Yahweh, his Elohim came after his name. He says, Yahweh, I'm the Elohim of your fathers. Read. The Elohim of Abraham, mm -hmm. the Elohim of Isaac, mm -hmm. and the Elohim of Jacob has sent me unto you. Mm -hmm. This is my name mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. And this is my memorial unto all generations. So he said his name is for ever now we couldn't use this with lord god because that was never forever because when you turn one page one fly leaf or three chapters away his name would have changed to god almighty but he said his name is yahweh forever let's turn the three chapters and see if there's any change go ahead exodus 6 and verse 2 holy name version and that 6 and 3 uh, two. Mm -hmm. And Elohim spake unto Moses and said unto him. So Elohim continued speaking to Moses and he said unto him, read. I am Yahweh. So he said, I am Yahweh, read. And I appeared unto Abraham, mm -hmm. unto Isaac, mm -hmm. and unto Jacob as El Shaddai. So listen, he's telling Moses, I am Yahweh, but I appeared unto your forefathers mm -hmm. as El Shaddai. And El Shaddai means almighty provider because he has always been providing for them, taking care of them. They knew him as El Shaddai. So even Adam knew him as El Shaddai, the patriarchs before. So that's what Yahweh was saying unto Moses at the burning bush, that the patriarchs before you, your forefathers, knew me as El Shaddai. He said, but by my name Yahweh was I not known unto them. That's what he said. So you look at the consistency. Get me Psalm 68 and verse 4. Psalm 68 and verse 4. Sing unto Elohim. So he's saying now, sing unto Elohim. Read. Sing praises to his name. Give me his name. What is Elohim's name so I can sing praises to his name? Read. Extol him 
that rideth upon the heavens by his name Yah. By his name Yah. But we know that his name is Yahweh. Because Yah is the masculine portion of the creator's name. Where is the feminine portion of the creator's name? Because Yahweh is both male and female in principle. I'm not saying to you that the creator has a male and a female reproductive organ. Right. His spirit. Right. So whatever comes forth from the creator is male and female. Do you see yourselves in here being male and female? Mm -hmm. Because even the man, the, mm -hmm. a natural man, he has both male and female hormones in his body. Androgen and estrogen. But what makes him a man is because the male hormone is more dominant than the female hormone. So he will start producing the pubic ears, his reproductive organ, because it's more dominant. What it is saying that Yahweh, who is our creator, he's both male and female. Yahweh don't need to go outside of him to reproduce. But when you look at it, Lord is masculine. Every Lord needs a lady. Every God needs a goddess. But they're teaching us today that Lord, which is masculine, God, which is masculine, come together, reproduce, and bring forth another male, which is Jesus Christ. And you know what that is promoting. That's promoting homosexuality and that spiritual homosexuality that they're producing. Because moreover, we're not seeing who they say God is. So you're thinking that is some spirit or some image there in your mind. Nor Lord, nor Jesus Christ. So there's no way three male, two male can reproduce and bring forth an offspring. But Yahweh is both male and female in principle. This is why when you look at it, you have Adam. That's Genesis. Get me, get me Genesis. Um, is it six and two? Or Genesis one twenty six. Genesis one and twenty. Mm -hmm. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image. Now this is the creator speaking. He said, let us make man in our image. Read. After our likeness. After our likeness. Read. And let them rule over the fish of the sea, mm -hmm. and over the birds of the heavens, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Mm -hmm. I want you to jump so to the verse now. Mm -hmm. Elohim created man in his image, and the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female. Hold on. Elohim created man in the, the image, image. His image. In his image. Male. Repeat that. So Elohim created man mm -hmm. in his image. Question. Who did Elohim create? The first man. Adam. Adam. And he said he created Adam in his image. Read. In the image of Elohim mm -hmm. created he him. Mm -hmm. Male and female. He said male and female created he them. Created he them. Read. That's plural. And bless them and call their name, T-H-E-I-R, their name, singular, what? Adam. So Yahweh created Adam. He created Adam male and female. He said male and female created he them and bless them and call their name Adam. But he only created one man. So where, how did you get male and female? That's telling you that Yahweh didn't have to go outside of himself to procreate. Yahweh is both male and female. So this is why when, as, uh, when Psalm 68 and 4 said, Extol him that rideth upon the heaven by his name Yah, we know it should be Yahweh, by his name Yahweh. Because Yah is just the masculine portion of his name. And people will never understand this, that mystery. So this is why when you read Hebrews 8 where it says this is a sum, this is just a little bit adding up to yeah. get into the sum. <laughs> These are all the things that this is the sum. The carnal ordinances, the name, the gospel, everything. It's saying this is the sum. 
So here, we are going to move on now. So let us move to Malachi 3 and verse 6. Because he says, Yahweh is his name, is Exodus. They didn't know him as Yahweh. They knew him as El Shaddai. Sing unto Elohim. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heaven by his name, Yahweh. And rejoice before him. Then he says now in Malachi 3 and verse 6, read. For I am Yahweh. I change not. I am Yahweh. I change not. Do you see the consistency? Yah, 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 yah. <laughs> Yahweh. I am Yahweh. I change not. Get me First John 5 and verse 7. Exodus 24, 9 and 10. And John 1 and 18. So anybody gets it, you can just grab it for me. I'll, um, in John 1 and 18, it tells you, no man had seen God at any time. Mm -hmm. First, first John 5, 5 and, and 7. 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. No, that's not the one I want. First John 5, there's one that says, no man had seen God not at any it. time. That's one. And that's Right. Yeah. Two places tell you no man had seen God at any time. Mm -hmm. And Exodus 24, 9 and 10 tells you 74 men saw yeah. God. John 1 and 18. Right. And no man has seen God at any time. So, the only, read. Yeah, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So, since it says no man had seen God at any time, twice... Exodus 24, 9 and 10. Quickly, let's call, let's do some addition. Then went up Moses. One man. So that's Moses. That's one man. Read. Moses and Aaron. Aaron, two men. Nadab and Abihu. Four men. Nadab and Abihu, four men. Read. And 70 of the elders of Israel. Mm -hmm. And they saw the God of Israel. 74 men saw God. Yeah. Now, how do you explain that? 74 men saw God and two places tell you no man had seen God. And Exodus 33 and 11 said, Moses spake unto God face to face as a man speaketh to his friend. And he said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. When you take this Bible to me, and you are teaching me from this Bible, how do you reconcile these contradictions? Brethren, time will not allow us many times. This is why we always say, we invite you to come back. Because there is so much more to learn. But as we said, this is a school. And I have like, what, about a minute, two minutes? Yeah. Okay, three minutes. three minutes, great. So I'll just see what I can wrap up here. But nevertheless, the name that was given to Moses was Yahweh. When Matthew, in Matthew 1, 21, the angel Gabriel appeared unto Miriam and he said, And she shall bring forth a son. Thou shalt call his name Yahshua, for he shall save his people from their sin, right. not Jesus. Right. And, it, and I, as I said the last, the last time I mentioned this, Yahweh didn't leave it up to Miriam or Joseph to name that child. That name was given before Miriam even knew she was pregnant with that child. He said, Yahweh said, you, shall, you, are found you have found favor with Yahweh and you're pregnant. And the child shall be called Yahshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. So his name denotes his purpose. Savior, salvation is in Yahshua. John 5, 43. So his son is Yah, Y-A-H-S-H-U-A. And I'm going to pick on somebody today. What is your name? Lisa. And what's your last name? Zaizi. Zaizi. No, I can tell. And that, what's, is that your maiden name or married name? It's my maiden name. Your maiden name, Lisa Zaizi. Mm -hmm. And I can tell. What's your first name? Lisa. No, Lisa is not your first name. That's uh -huh. <laughs> true. Zaizi. Maybe. What's, can I have your name, please? I saw you. And what's your last first name? It's, that's my first name. Your first name is? Right. I saw you. And what's your last name? Hawkins. Hawkins. That's not, Hawkins is not your last name. It's a surname. It's your first name. It's my first name? Yes. When you were in your mother's womb, mm -hmm. they knew that was a Hawkins child before ultrasound or whatever could tell the gender of the child. Mm -hmm. So they knew that was a Hawkins child in there. Mm -hmm. They had to wait nine months 
if there was no ultrasound or whatever. They had to wait nine months when that child comes forth to attach the first name if it was a girl. That name would be different if it was a boy, then you get the first name. You are list alphabetically by your last name, which yeah. is really your first name. Yeah. This is showing you that it's coming from Yahweh. Yahweh and his son, Yahshua. You notice, Yah, he said, I am come in my father's name, and you receive me not. He said, let another come in his own name, him you will receive. And the whole world received Jesus Christ. But he came in his father's name, Yahweh, Yahshua. Yah, he came in the masculine portion of the father's name. This is why we come in our father's name. And if your father didn't own you, and your mother gave you her name, your mother's name came from her father's name. So it's still coming from that male lineage. So Yahshua came in his father's name. Philippians 2 and 9, Acts 4 and verse 12. And we could go on and on, and there are so many witnesses. Philippians 2 and 9, Acts 4. I quote, Philippians 2 and 9, it says, Wherefore Yahweh hath highly exalted him, that's Yahweh Elohim, and given him a name which is above every name, which is Yahshua. It says, at the name of Yahshua, every knee should bow. And I wrote it here last week, G-E-N-U, it's not this knee. Did you listen to when they were doing the song? It's not this knee that's bow. These knees can't bow, they bend. But it's your G-E-N-U, right? It's found in your head region. The genu, which is your intelligence. That's what is going to bow. It says every knee shall bow. Because you know, how do you take a bow? It says, ladies, may curse you, gentlemen, may bow. You bow from here. So every knee should bow. And every tongue confess that Yahshua is the Savior. So I can write knee here, because this is what it means. Right? And Acts 12. 12. Mm -hmm. Neither is there salvation in any other. So it's telling you, neither is there salvation in Lord God or Jesus For Christ. There is none other name. There is no other name. Under heaven. Under heaven. Given among men. Given among men. Whereby we must be saved. Saving the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Salvation is only in one name, and that's Yahshua. If you have learned anything, mm -hmm. give thanks unto the Most High. That's Yahshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your time. And I'd like to call our second speaker, the visiting brother from the Orlando, Florida branch, Dr. Nikki Johnson. Good morning, class. Good morning. Um, and I'm going to try to pick up right where the first speaker left off. But, you know, my sentiments this morning uh, sort of mirror the same as hers about being thankful to be here. I didn't have to travel quite as far to get here. <laughs> but, um, you know, I woke up this morning. We don't have class in Orlando this morning. I went to bed last night, rather. And I thought, you know, the whole week it's this. I have to be in someone's class on Sunday. I need to be in class. That's mm -hmm. it's just what's on my heart. Yeah. And last night I lay down in bed and I'm thinking, well, you know, I could sleep in. <laughs> you know, I could actually do my hair because it's a mess this morning. You know, there's all these thoughts about stuff that I could do with this time. And then I happen to be watching this lecture from the Southfield, Michigan class, Dr. Rhonda Brazil. In the beginning of her lecture, She's talking about how there are all these excuses that we can make to not be in class, how the devil will plague you with all these thoughts, things you can do, things you should do, and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, man, if this wasn't right on time, this is how she opened her testimony. And it's just like, you know, she talked about different things that other people have had to go through to get to class. And it's, it's really so simple. Like, I get in my car, I have heat, I have air. You just drive. You just, you just go. It's, Yahweh has made it so easy for some of us to be here so we really have no excuse to not come because at the end of the day, what we're coming down here to learn, and I really enjoyed your testimony, is something far greater than all this natural crap that we can get distracted with. So when we're talking about coming to class and this, the love in this branch, mm -hmm. it is oh, yeah. so amazing. We're talking about 
the attributes of the Father because that's what we're mm -hmm. that's what we're looking for ultimately mm -hmm. when we talk about being able to see Yahshua operating in these vessels. We're talking about these attributes, if you will, taking on shape and form. So I can appreciate the fact that Yahweh allowed me to be here this morning with the brethren in this Tampa branch because I love you guys so much. <laughs> I do. I really do. It brings joy to my heart. But let's go ahead. So she, the last thing she picked up was Acts 4 and 12. Go ahead and go back to um, go ahead and go back to the third chapter and pick up the train of thought because she's talking about the importance of this name and she brought up something that's so important down here now and that's consistency because what you have going on in a lot of these schools right now is a lot of inconsistent doctrine things that don't follow through what was way back here the reason why we have been encouraged to go back to the law and to the prophets is so that you can see the witnesses the witnesses that have already been laid down through the law and the prophets we get back here talking about in luke when he walked with his dis with his disciples and he took them back so that he could expound to them the things concerning himself we want to find ourselves doing that exact same thing because then we get some consistency. We're talking about being able to have faith in the operation of Yahweh. So when we look at this name as an example or any principle that we want to talk about, Yahweh has made it so simple because like she picked up in Malachi, he changes not because if he did change, none of us will be able to follow, follow through enough to be able to pick up on anything about him. And we know that eternal life is to know him. So we need to be thankful for the consistency because it's easy to get caught up in all these distractions that are going on. But thanks be to Yahweh, we have, we have a guideline. We have a roadmap. We have a pattern that has been given to us to be able to line these things up and to see what is true. Is it according to what thus saith Yahweh? Because when the founder had this vision, he said that he didn't come in to talk about anything new. He came in to confirm that which Moses saw, that which John saw, these things, this vision that was given, and this is where a lot of people are getting messed up. This vision is not contrary to the scripture. It is in support of it. So when you have, it's a, it's a lot of ministers down here now that have their versions of it, if you will. Just like we have this Bible. It's so easy to look out at the church world and we see King James Version. You got the New International Version. You got the Catholic Version. You got the Muslim. All these different Bibles that people have come to put their own been on, if you will, for how they feel they want the creator to be or how they feel they want to accomplish their salvation. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, and there's this transcript that I was reading last night, it's called The True Elohim in Numerology. It's a beautiful transcript. It's very short, so it's a great read. Uh, if you like me and you fall asleep sometimes when you're reading. But, you know, the founder in there, he's talking about, you know, we go through these scriptures and we use Isaiah or Jeremiah or Moses, or these different vessels that were as a witness to the things that have already been laid down for consistency. But at the end of the day, it's not the vessels. We want to talk about what thus saith Yahweh, period. And if it's any different than what's already been laid down, it is wrong. It is erroneous. And you don't, don't accept that. So when we talk about this name, and this is so beautiful when she was talking about the inconsistency if you're looking at the King James Version of the Bible. And you are, you would just be confused. Like, if you don't know what's there, then you are bound to believe anything. And you take that to us down here in these classes now. This is a school. That's why it's not a church. If you don't know what's already been laid down if you haven't examined the law and the prophets to know what's in there then you are bound to believe anything that's why you're told come to class learn all that you can learn be regular in your attendance because we're down here we're down here at the end of this thing now and we don't have we don't have time or i'll put it on me i don't have time to be distracted by all the other foolishness that's going on because I need to know my creator for myself. So when we get to this name, 
And we're talking about the power in Yahweh and Yahshua's name. He yeah. said, and we're going to just pick this mm -hmm. up and get back to Acts. Go ahead and go back to yes. Exodus. Go back to Exodus for a minute and pick up the ninth chapter. Um, and I want 16, but I want you to start a little bit above that. Because when Yahweh gave Moses his name, he commissioned him to come back down here into the land of Egypt to deliver his one son, to deliver the children of Israel mm -hmm. up out of this bondage that they were mm -hmm. in. And he told him that he would have to come unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh in the fifth chapter says, I know not Yahweh. And that's the state and condition that you find the world in. But we don't want to be sitting in these classes and have the name and still don't know Yahweh. So when he's, Moses is sent down here to deliver them out, and he tells them that Pharaoh was great back here from a natural standpoint. We got all these people that want to be somebody, people that want to have something to say in class, people that want to be whoever they are to be respected. Well, guess what? You have a purpose too. He raised up Pharaoh for one purpose only. Don't forget what we're talking about. This is Yahweh's purpose. Don't get caught up in nothing else. He raised up Pharaoh to do what? Go ahead and read. Exodus, Exodus 9 and 13. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say unto him, mm -hmm. Thus saith Yahweh Elohim of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart and upon thy servants and upon thy people that thou mayest know that there is none like me. That you Lord. may know that there is none like him. None. If you need to look up the definition of that word, none, there is none like Yahweh our Elohim. Keep reading. For now I will stretch out my hand, mm -hmm. that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence, and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. Mm -hmm. 16. And in very deed, for this cause have I raised thee up, for to show in thee my power. In this, in very deed, for this cause I have raised you up, Pharaoh, to show in thee, not Pharaoh's power, he didn't have no power on his own. When he talked to me, when Yahweh told Moses that he would send him down there, he told, he told him that he was going to have to harden his heart. Pharaoh wasn't bad enough, if you will, to resist. You talk about these plagues that Yahweh poured out. And when I went back to examine these things, I'm thinking about me from a natural standpoint. Now listen, the first five plagues alone, I'd have been done. Like, <laughs> listen, <laughs> you talking about these frogs and these flies and these I don't even like creeping I see one and I'm gone like just you talk about an abundance of these things so you this man this natural man listen go get out but we're talking about 10 plagues that were poured out down here Yahweh said this was to show his power he said he would destroy Egypt by his armies. Yeah. That's what those plagues were down here to destroy all those idols. Yeah. Go ahead and keep reading. And that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. And that my name <coughs> might be declared throughout all the earth. That's the purpose for raising him up because it's going to show his Yahweh's power and Yahweh's name. So the children of Israel, they come up out of this land of Egypt through the divided waters of the Red Sea and they resurrect out here into the wilderness. And they are given this law. They're told to wash up and clean up and Yahweh marries them out here, if you will. They're given this law. And in this law, they are told about this name and how important it is because there's so many people out here now that want to make you think that Yahweh's name ain't important. Right. That all y'all people yeah. down here in this school, y'all making a big old fuss about this name. Well, no, I beg your pardon. Yahweh made a fuss about his name. It's in your book that you claim that you read. And the, the irony is that it's in so many places that he's talking about how important his name is to him. That's the reason why all of this is going on. So we want to keep that in mind when we talk about 
what we're down here to do because we want to make sure we give the glory back to Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yahshua, because there ain't no man that deserves it. So when they get out here, go ahead and get me Exodus 20 and just start at 1 and go down through 7. Exodus 20 and 7. Start at 1. 20 and 1. Thank you. And Yahweh spake all these words, saying, mm -hmm. I am Yahweh, thy Elohim, which have brought thee up, brought thee out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh, thy Elohim. Now, it was just in Exodus, the 12th chapter, some eight chapters ago, that he brought them up out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And so this isn't, it's not even a whole year. It's not even six months later. But let me remind you, we're talking about consistency here. Mm -hmm. These things being rehearsed. Mm -hmm. These things being repeated let me remind you what happened just let's see this was in april this is now june so some two months ago let me tell you about what i did for you in case you forgot already <laughs> i brought you up out of this land of yeah. egypt mm -hmm. i bore you on eagles eagles wings and brought you up out of this bondage this darkness that you were in go ahead and keep reading I am yahweh thy elohim which have brought thee out of the land of egypt mm -hmm. out of the house of bondage Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Don't have no other gods before me. Keep reading. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, mm -hmm. or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, Yahweh Elohim, am a jealous Elohim, serving, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Listen, my name is so important that if if you, I'll say it like this, if you disrespect it, if you break this, I'm going to visit the iniquity of your children, of your children's children, of your children's children's children, and then the next generation. If that don't tell you how important this thing was, I don't know what else will. Keep reading. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me. But showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me. Keep reading. And keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh thy Elohim in vain. Mm -hmm. For Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Yahweh will not. And we got to bring this down here present day. Yahweh will not hold them guiltless that take his. It's so easy. We get, we get out of Lord God right. and Jesus Christ. We come into class, we find out the truth, and it's, it seems like it's all right for a while. And then you sit in here long enough, and it's like, oh, but now we got to progress. Now we got to get something better. Now we got to see it this way or that way. Listen, when, we, when you first came into this school, and it was talked about this name with Moses back here at this burning bush, the emphasis on proving this thing was that he said that this is my name forever. It's so easy for us to be able to say, oh, we can joke about it now. Oh, forever didn't end when King James wrote the Bible. Well, guess what? Forever didn't end after none of these vessels were sent out after Dr. Kinley. So don't get it twisted down here and think that something has changed. He says, I change not. We're talking about consistency. Keep reading. Eight, remember the Sabbath day. Okay, you can stop there. So this, this name that was declared, and they have this tabernacle pattern. They get up out of the land of Egypt by a pattern. We're talking about a prescribed way. What, what are we talking about? Y'all, we're talking about the gospel of Yahshua. We're talking about a death, a burial, and a resurrection. We're talking about, give me 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, brethren, mm -hmm. I declare unto you the gospel. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Mm -hmm. And just remember whenever it is that you heard this scripture read or explained to you or Yahweh revealed to you how important this is when you came into this class. Keep reading. Which I preached unto it's you. It's been preached unto you. Which also ye have received. But, keep reading. And wherein ye stand. You have received it. And you can stand in it. These classes, we're talking about salvation of your soul. We're talking about how we even got here to begin with. Because from a natural standpoint, I don't know if anybody in here is a natural Jew. If you are, it's still the same. Jew and Gentile. You were 
preached. The gospel was preached unto them. It says they sat, it fell on them, and they received it. It's still the same preaching of this gospel. But you've got to know what the gospel is. You have to, I'll, and I'll take it even off the page, because you can read it and still not really know. You have to see the gospel operating in your life. You have to know that it is truly testifying because you have a savior right. you have a savior that died for you so that you could live spiritually right. and to really to really grasp the importance or how significant that is you have to be able to see it repeating you have to be able not only back here in the law and the prophets and him fulfilling it, but i'm talking even after that, you had the apostles that came in, and you had principles of, who was it that was in jail? Was it Pete? It was Paul. Um, you see principles of a death, burial, and a resurrection still. We talk about it in our daily lives, whether you're eating or you're sleeping. Things that you have to, they are a necessity. Y'all, I love food. It is my favorite thing, probably ever. You can't not eat. You can Days that I go and I get through like half of my day and sometimes I don't get food, I'm borderline miserable. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, it's not a fun thing. I have to mentally tell myself like, get it together. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's not fun. But now you flip that spiritually, if you will. When we gather here in these classes, this is a feast. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. eating. Yeah. So when we talk about being able to come to class as often as you can, listen, for the first time, we have classes once a week right now. And it is a detriment for me <laughs> because I'm, I'm usually looking for it. And I say that and I, I laugh, but I say this in all seriousness. To go through when, like my week, my work week, you're talking about being able to hold on to the things that you've been taught and really knowing yeah. what you've been taught mm -hmm. about being able to stand in this gospel when you can't go to a class. Yeah. And it's like, where is your mind? Yeah. What, where, what is it that Yahweh is going to use to sustain you, to get you through when you can hear this gospel be preached again? That's how important it is. Go ahead and keep reading. Two, by which also you are saved. You're saved in the gospel. Don't forget that you are saved in it. We're talking about salvation. Keep reading. If you keep in memory. But you got to keep it in memory. You've got to keep it in memory. There are a lot of lectures that some of the elders in class I've watched and they're talking about people that they've seen come in and out of class. Mm -hmm. People that have came in, they've been diligent. They've been able to run principles. They've been able to give what seemed like solid testimonies. Yeah. And then they turn around and go back out into the church world. Mm -hmm. Or they have gathered together enough information to give their own doctrine, if you will now. They've turned away They've turned, where's apostasy? They've turned away from that which they have already acknowledged and professed themselves to have been the truth. So keep these things in memory. That's why it's important for it to be rehearsed. Regardless of how many times you've heard this name principle run. Listen, it's still a joy. It is still an absolute joy pleasure to be reminded of those things so that you can keep it in memory keep yeah, reading yeah. if you keep in memory what i have preached unto you unless, unless you, you have, have believed, believed it in vain, vain. Right. for i delivered unto you first of all that which i also received mm -hmm. how that yahshua died for our sins according to the scriptures yahshua died for our sins <coughs> according to the scriptures and keep reading he was buried he was buried. And that he rose again the third day. He rose again the third day according, according to, to the, the scriptures. scriptures. That's this gospel. That's mm -hmm. this. We have this set up in this pattern so that you have something to test these things that speakers are saying. Don't and don't sit in here for so long and think now that you just got to accept what somebody is saying. It is still your divine right to have it proven to you. To have it proven to your satisfaction. That's what the founder said. Or else you are not obligated to believe it. Period. So we have in this pattern, this tabernacle pattern, the key of knowledge. I said every time I moderate and it's like sometimes you go through 
the moderation, and Yahweh will just have me stuck somewhere. I'll keep going, but it's like, reflect on what I have told you. Everything, everything, every, that, leave, that don't leave nothing out. So we say that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. So we need to know something about this pattern. If don't nothing escape it, in this pattern you have this principle of a death a burial and a resurrection which gets you into the holy place what is that testifying to it, he is the pattern so it mm -hmm. it's it's no surprise if you will this is a death a burial and a resurrection that we're talking about here that's the gospel of yashua go ahead and go over to um get me first kings and then jump over to acts uh, 1 Kings 18. Because when she was talking about this name, and she mentioned it here, but when we talk about the power that's in this name, and the witnesses that have already been laid down through the scriptures, not only just in the scriptures, but even present tense to, to today, that his name is important, and he set it up that way. So you have, and this is probably one of my favorite examples of something that's taking place, because you have Elijah here, and he thinks that he is one of the last prophets that's left, that's holding on to what, to what was given to them. That he's alone and by himself. And it, it gets easy to feel that way sometimes. It really does. But Yahweh said that he had some four, did he say, was it 450? Mm -hmm. 450 prophets. That were still giving glory to him. That were still in obedience, if you will. So it's a, it's a pleasure to me when I have the opportunity to visit with brethren that are holding on to this truth, that are holding on to it the way that it was given. And I don't need, sometimes you can't even say that because now people talk about the way it was given from their dean or whatever the case may or may not be. So let's, the way that it was originally set up by Yahweh Elohim, the way that it has been confirmed through the scriptures and by anybody else that came after it, the exact same way so when elijah comes in on the scene and he's talking about this lord or Baal, if you will and you have these opposers if you will these people that are all worshiping Baal, all these people because in in the world you have a lot of people that'll do stuff and it'll make it seem like it's right it's easy to go along to get along down here now people don't want to be a that's the big thing now. You offended somebody. People don't want to be offended. People want to fit in. Listen, yeah. Yahweh brought you in this class to set you apart, not to blend in with the rest of the foolishness that's going on. So when Elijah is coming down here now to talk to them, go ahead and start at, um, start at, yeah, you can start at 20. That's fine. I didn't hear what. First Kings 18, 20. 18, 20. 25. So Ahab. Sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Mm -hmm. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long, how, how long have you been two opinions? How long halt ye between two opinions? Go ahead and keep reading. Yahweh, the elephant, followed him not. If Baal. Okay. Then followed him. So Elijah is asking them a question. How long halt ye between two opinions? And he's saying, now if Yahweh, if Yahweh be Elohim, because y'all know it's, it's stuff going on in this school where people act like they don't understand who Elohim is. And it goes back to the same deception that was going on back here in the scripture it's just a different manifestation of it if Yahweh be Elohim then you follow him but if Baal and we talk about it all the time in the King James version she was talking about inconsistency so if you read this out of King James it says if the Lord be God you follow him but if Baal now Baal is Lord so what are we what are we saying? <laughs> we don't know. 
inconsistencies. So now let's make it clear when you have these things. And that's, I'm so thankful that Yahweh brought me into this class to get me out of this, this confusion. It is absolute confusion. If Yahweh be Elohim, then you follow him. But if it's Baal, if it's Lord, if it's God, if it's Jesus, if it's Allah, Buddha, Krishna, if it's your dean, your president, if it's you, yourself, and you. If you think that Yahweh and Elohim and you want to follow whatever it is, you, that's fine. You, you do what you want to do. But listen, what Joshua said it in Joshua, the 24th chapter, said, as for me and my house, I'm going to serve Yahweh, period. So you had that demonstration that was done where they had those sacrifices that were offered up. And you had those that were calling on Baal. And the, I'd have never read this in the Bible if I had not come into class. But you got these people sacrificing unto idols and they're calling out for this God who is not answering them. And so you have Elijah mocking. I'd have never thought this was in the Bible. Elijah, a prophet, is mocking these people. Is your God sleep? <laughs> is he journeying afar off? Like, is he too busy to handle whatever it is that you need? Y'all, I don't need that type of God. I don't need that type of God that can't do nothing for me. And then, I mean, that's just, that's what it is. But you have an example in the scripture of this happening. So when Elijah comes in and it's, it's made absolutely clear that Yahweh is Elohim. The consuming fire that burnt up that sacrifice in the trench and all the water, everything that was out there. So without a shadow of a doubt, you will have no question. That's where we want to find ourselves at now. When you're sitting in these classes, when something is proven to your satisfaction, you want to know without a shadow of a doubt, at least I do, that this is the absolute truth, that this is truly what I can hold on to for salvation for my soul. Back there in Deuteronomy, this, go ahead and get 6 and 5 and then get to Acts and I'll have my seat. When he told them, Yahweh thy Elohim is Yahweh a unity. And he said that you should love, you should love Yahweh your Elohim. Don't let people tell you that you don't got no Elohim. You should love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Don't let that just be words on paper. We're talking about a living reality down here now. How you walk about in your everyday life. What is it that you are manifesting? It's, it's time down here now for us to start examining ourselves and to really introspect on what we're learning down here. Because I don't know about y'all, but I don't come to... I love you guys from a natural standpoint as people. I enjoy being able to see Yahshua in vessels. But if it's not Yahshua in me, because that is... My only hope of glory. This has to be a personal thing. If Yahshua is not in you, it don't matter how many vessels you can see it in. If Yahshua is not in you, you have no hope of glory. Period. That's in the book. I didn't say it. It's in Colossians, the first chapter. This mystery that's been hidden and now it's been given. It's a gift. We talk about eternal life is a gift. It's been given to the Gentiles. You have an opportunity to just accept this gift, this beautiful, wonderful gift that Yahweh so mercifully given unto us. So when we talk about over there in Acts where she ended, the fourth chapter. Acts 4 and 8, I'll pick it up. Mm -hmm. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all. But before that, I'm sorry, the seventh so verse, he, they asked them, by what power? We're talking about these aren't just words. It's no coincidence that that's, that's the way this question is phrased. Yeah. By what power and by what name have you done this? 
this yeah. miraculous thing that all these people can see and can't nobody deny. How did you do this? You make it clear. Whatever it is that you're doing down, whatever it is that you claim that you know, whatever it is that you learn, whatever works that Yahweh has manifested through you to be shown to the people, whatever it is, you make sure that you are declaring yeah. that it is by Yahshua. It is by Yahshua the Messiah. Whom Yahweh raised from the dead. We still preaching the gospel. Yes. Right. Raised from the dead. Yeah. It is by him that you can do whatever it is that you can do. By no one else can anything else be done. Not in righteousness. That's what we're talking about. Getting back to the Father in righteousness. So you make sure you give glory. You give all the glory to Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yahshua, period. Ain't no more vessels that's coming along after that to add to the thing. We come into school to know Yahweh, our Elohim. Eternal life is to know Yahweh, Elohim, through his son, Yahshua. And my prayer is just that he continue to keep me where he has me in my heart and mind. Because what I feel is in my soul if I can say it like that is I truly want to have that intimate relationship with my Heavenly Father I want to know down here now that this is the truth and that my soul is being saved yeah. and not that I'm wasting time and I pray that I am not one of those that he is going to use to end up back out there in something after I have professed this to be the truth and with that Thanks be to Yashua. I'm so happy to be here, guys. I'm so happy to be here. Hallelujah. I'd like to call on our final speaker, our visitor from um, Cowdersport, Pennsylvania, Dr. Kathy Hewels. Oh, you couldn't hear me, you didn't be there in any way. Not really. I want you to go to the scripture reading. Romans 8. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Hebrews. Yeah, go ahead. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the son. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Now that's Yahweh Elohim. And you know, he's, he came into Dr. Kinley at the close of this age and warned us of the end. Mm -hmm. By a vision and revelation, mm -hmm. just like at the end of every age, one is sent with a vision to warn the people of impending doom. Noah was the one. At the end of this age, obviously you got Yahshua, but John the Baptist bore witness mm -hmm. to him mm -hmm. to prove he's one. Now, at the end of this last stage, Dr. Kinley, Yahweh Elohim just takes over him, and he expresses this divine vision and re revelation to us. And we are ready to get the hell out of here. And I said it just like I meant it. Th somebody just said to me recently, you're going to go to hell. You're already in hell. Don't waste your bus fare. You're there, man. Every one of us that have been born and, you know, with an innocent soul and an ignorant soul, Satan got to us and deceived us with the ways of the world. Mm -hmm. Please read Revelation 12 through 9. Mm -hmm. And a King James. But you can insert the true names because it's different numbers in the Holy Name. Revelation 12. Mm -hmm. 1 through 9. Mm -hmm. No, just I'm read sorry. Revelation 12. Okay, 7 through 9, huh? That's okay. And that was These readers are doing great, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Man, I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Exodus 12. Exodus 12 and 7. Thank you. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the I'll dragon fought. I'll use this. And his heaven. Uh-huh. prevailed not. Mm -hmm. Neither was this place found anymore in heaven. 
So Satan was cast to the unfinished earth and then shows up in the garden to Adam and Eve, but really mostly to the woman because she represents the creation. Eve's name means the mother of all living. Mm -hmm. So right within Eve, you have us all. And when Satan got Eve, he got us all. Mm -hmm. And then Adam, yes, Adam had to sin, but it really wasn't because he wanted to. It was because Adam had the Holy Spirit. He was the son of Yahweh Elohim. But he loved his wife so much that he took up the tree and sinned to be with her, to cleave unto her, and, you know, make babies with her and perpetuate until the Savior came in. And we've got 63 generations from Adam down to Yahshua, you know. And he is saving us through Yahshua. You can't cut out Yahshua. And I noticed in the other camp, they never talk about him. They talk about Elohim. And sometimes, when I was there, they even put Yahweh Elohim before the Father. It's like, really? The Father is the source and substance of everything. And he had offspring that is just like him, that looks just like him, Yahweh Elohim. You can't pass Yahshua, Yahweh Elohim. You can't see him. Has anybody seen Yahweh Elohim lately? Like in a vision? No. So he has to manifest in the flesh as the savior of the world so that we can finally see the reality of things. That's really why. He's carrying out his purpose so we can know him, know the truth about him, as the previous speaker said, and to love him. When we give everything we have to keep our heart and minds on him and love him as he deserves because he has saved us by mercy and grace, not by any works that we can do. And I know you've heard this a ton, but this is a scroll. You can scroll it down. And you could put... Thou shalt dress up for class. Thou shalt travel every month for class. Thou shalt be a great speaker on the floor. Thou shalt, thou shalt. When you come into class, instead of keeping the carnal ordinances you had, we got a new set. You know, if you misuse it, obviously we all have to do those things. Come to class. Dress halfway decent. You know what I mean? It's not far-fetched. It's just a matter of if you count it as a work and you think you're better than anybody or your righteousness comes from that, you're totally wrong. There is none good but the Father. Yahshua said that. Okay. In Hebrews, the scripture reading, I just wanted to pick up the whole idea. 13. Uh, start at 12. Hebrews 8 and 12. Maybe start at 10. My bad. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Now hold on one second. It's talking about almost 4,000 years ago. The old covenant came in, and it dealt with physical works around this physical building called the tabernacle, and physical works that you could do. Okay. Physical works like circumcision, ceremonies, baptisms, and suppers, and sacrifices, and Ten Commandment laws. And I told you, you can bring those into class and make them different things. You know what I mean? But read that again, please. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Now, this was made with the house of Israel. This was not made with Gentiles, right? And it was an old covenant, and it was imposed on them in Hebrews 9. And in Hebrews 10... He took it upon himself to be the sacrifice for all of us. You know what I'm saying? So uh, keep reading there. I just want the essence of this thing. After those days, saith Yahweh. After Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection, or fulfilling all the law and the prophets, and his death, burial, and resurrection, after those days, I'm going to give you my I Holy Spirit. I will put my laws into their minds right. and write them in their hearts. Right. And I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Right, that's good. So it's about the old covenant and what's going to happen in the new covenant. And because you know in Jeremiah 31, 32, 31, 31, the, the things look alike. In other words, the works that Yahweh gave Moses and what we're to be doing for righteousness, they kind of look alike. But really one is spiritual and one is carnal. The law given to a carnal-minded people, that's just how they took it carnally, and they could not keep it because they didn't believe. 
You know what I mean? Y'all just right. gave down that law. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're seeing is we had an old covenant. Most people don't even know about the Old Testament right. covenant versus the New Testament covenant. They think, oh yeah, this is the New Testament. We used to have little Bibles, no kidding. It had uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, it had a Psalms. Mm -hmm. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the epistles. Like Yahshua said, search the scriptures. Well, where are they? <laughs> if I'm only going out of the King James Bible, where are the scriptures? The scriptures are not Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. The scriptures are the law and the prophets. Isaiah 8 and 20, two of the law, and two of the testimony. If they, anybody, speaks according to this word, there is no light in them. We have to go to Yahweh's witnesses. There's no way you can know him if you don't. And, you know, we were talking about how that Paul said in 1 Corinthians 4, uh, I think it's 4 and 3, I plant Apollos waters, but what? Yahweh gives the increase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All we can do is preach this gospel. Mm -hmm. And we certainly don't want to put people back under the old covenant by giving them a bunch of do's and don'ts and glass. We don't want to do that. We're saved by mercy and grace under this covenant. It's different than the old covenant. You know what I mean? So here's the, uh, at the end of the day, I like how she said that. At the end of the day, we have an old covenant that is fulfilled by Yahshua and nailed to the cross, and he does not appreciate us trying to earn our righteousness. Because that, that leaves it so that you think there's something about you. All glory goes to the Creator. That's just the bottom line. We need to get us and ourselves out of the way. You know what I mean? So you see the covenants, an old covenant and the new covenant was set up by by Yahshua the Messiah through his death, burial, resurrection. 50, uh, 50 days later, he pours out his Holy Spirit in the hearts and minds of men so they can truly worship him, like it says in John 4, 24, in spirit and in truth. If Yahshua never came in and fulfilled the old way of worship in flesh and even lies for Israel, they didn't keep the old covenant, if, and he brought it in a new covenant. We need the Savior to nail that old covenant to the cross and bring in a new covenant. And he has done that. Finish. Like to the Jew. It's uh, Hebrews. Yeah. Finish that. He Hebrews. wanted in Hebrews. Yeah. I think it is. And he taketh away the first yep. thing. Okay. Just the last couple of verses. Hebrews 8 and... I don't know. Okay. Know the eraser. Where's the eraser? And they shall... 8 and 11... And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, Yahweh, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Yeah. For I will be merciful to the unrighteous. I'll be merciful. That's the only way we can be saved. Just like Yahweh was merciful, having them build this tabernacle and dwelling in it, because he knew the law he gave them, they would not be able to keep. So by mercy mm -hmm. and grace, mm -hmm. he made atonement for them once a year, so they didn't die physically. See, it was by his mercy and grace, when he comes in, he fulfills that old covenant and brings in a new one. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And we know the Holy Spirit does the teaching, too. You know, you don't have to teach every man his neighbor. No, you shouldn't teach every man his neighbor. <laughs> Let what thus saith Yahweh teach everybody. You know what I mean? Because it's not about us at all. Keep going. In that he saith a new covenant, he has made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxes old is ready to vanish away. Mm-hmm. And if you go over into Peter, 2 Peter 3, this thing is going out by fire. And I just wanted to lay the foundation that pick up on the previous speakers. Yahweh's proof just is unmistakable to reveal the truth. It's, it's just that simple. And to reveal his nature to us and to actually see him in you. If you don't know how he works, she just got through saying he doesn't change. If his Holy Spirit is in you, you should act like it. And I'm not talking acting, you know, like it for a movie. I'm talking really do, uh, changing you, changing your nature from carnal to spiritual. See, the old covenant 
It gave rise to the mystery of iniquity to just get in there and deceive everybody. Remember they left Egypt and all the Egyptians? 666. 600 chariots, 600 horsemen, and 600 horses. Satan bore the name of that. But Yahweh delivered the children of Israel up out of Egypt through a death, burial, resurrection, and that Passover lamb died for them to be able to have that, to take away the old covenant so that we could now come out of Babylon, my people, that wrong nature, that wrong mystery, and be translated or, uh, what's the word I want, really? Reformed. Our souls can be reformed to be in the image of the head. See, there's a head and a body in both mysteries. And each one has, there's a head, like Yahshua's the king. Well, Satan is a king too. Just read your book. He's a king too. And Yahshua, the Messiah, comes in low. Satan comes in high. And Yahshua, the Messiah, came in to take away that old covenant. So we could finally be a bride that has the spirit that can treat him right. You know what I mean? Satan has a bride, but he treats her like awful. Mm -hmm. So what Yahshua does is he brings our souls out of there by the spirit of truth. Mm -hmm. And it says in Proverbs 16, 6, by mercy and truth. You know what? Does anybody know what the rest is? By mercy and truth. Iniquity is purged. We have nothing to do with this. If you still are on that side, you can't save yourself. You need to trust Yahshua to save you. If we think that we have a chance to save ourselves, we have really lost it. You know what I mean? If you deny Yahshua in Romans 8, 24, if you deny, Yahshua says this, if you deny that I am he, you'll, you shall die in your sins. You leave Yahshua out of this, you're dead in the water, man. Really. So... Here's the old new covenant, and that's the reason why I stopped, why Yahshua fulfilled the old covenant, is because this one didn't work. But King James Version Bible says, finding fault with them. The Holy Name Bible says, finding fault with it. There was nothing wrong with this law. There was nothing wrong with what Yahweh set them up to do. The dietary laws, all of it was for their good always. You can read that, like Deuteronomy 5 and 6, 7, 8, 9. It, it all says the same thing. You know, Yahweh provided this tabernacle for Israel while they were yet sinners, and it's by his grace and mercy, mercy that this vessel of salvation was there for him. And what makes me, I think, is so sweet and great is that salvation came from the mercy seat. Yahweh Elohim appeared to the priest in all his glory. And atonement was made, the flash of the Shekinah, right? Mm -hmm. He revealed himself in all his glory in the most holy place, but it was on the mercy seat. And this pattern is a transformation of him. Yeah, this is the pattern of the universe, but this is the real archetype original pattern of the universe. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, this old covenant that Yahweh set up, it was never meant to really work to save a soul. Never. Yahweh set this thing up so that we could see wrongs. We had, so we'd have a good contrast between the devil and righteousness. And now that you understand, you have to go forth and share your revelation by the law and the prophets and the fulfillment, by the pattern, and get a witness in the creation. Show how Yahweh is true. Show how he's the Savior. It's not what we're saying. It's what let's say of Yahweh. So I just want to make that point. Yahshua really did fulfill that old covenant because they broke it. And he knew that he was going to have his Holy Spirit get within them. He was going to put his Holy Spirit in them to convert their souls. He knew that was down the line. That's why he promised that. In Jeremiah, I'm going to write my law on in your inward parts. And in Ezekiel 36, 24, you know, I'll gather you out. And I'll cause you to walk in righteousness. And I'll cause you to be clean. He's doing the whole thing mm -hmm. under this covenant. So he took away the old and he brought in the new. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And one of the things, if you look at the end of each age, 
Wasn't there an angel with a flame of fire that cast them down? It shows that they went down by fire. Even though they were Yahshua's chosen, you have a principle of that. You know, and when you, uh, let me just, I want to write this down so I remember. Uh, now you know that Yash, in Isaiah 46, 9 and 10, it says that the creator declares the end of his purpose right from the beginning. Right? So he knew that this old covenant was going to be there for a time to help save them from being killed for their sins. He set it up. He, he knows the whole thing and where it's going. Everything. He knows everything about every one of us. But the consummation principle is at the end of each age, you see the bad guys, so to speak, and by fire. Fire drove them out of that garden. Look, so that this is a train of thought here. Consummation or the fiery end of this universe is by fire. And if you, Yahshua said in John 5, 39, go back to Moses, right? Mm -hmm. What's the first thing we see about in Moses? You see this fiery cloud over on top of Mount Sinai, right? And you see the children of Israel in a death-like state, and for his power he raised them up, right? And then he, they were buried in the Red Sea, and then they resurrected into the wilderness. This is Yahweh's show, and that's how he behaves. But this Egypt down here represents the iniquitous world full of darkness, right? I'm not saying so. I'm not mm -hmm. teaching anything new. Right. I love the simple things. And you can get tr in trouble for trying to get too deep because we're just not that grown up yet. <laughs> Honest. I really mean that. Okay. Well, I want to show you that the consummation or the end of this age is going out by fire. It is. It is a fire outside and it's a fire inside. You know how people get burned when you start talking about the truth? They actually get mad at you. It's like, okay, I'm not going to tell you about it again. <laughs> I was trying to do you a favor. You know? It's, it sounds funny, but it really is sad. You know, because Yahshua hasn't chosen them. They can't help it. No mystery can help it. In fact, Satan is a good devil, Dr. Kinley said. Good for what? For the purpose that Yahweh created him for. He's a great devil to oppose him. He made him that way. So the mystery of iniquity, bottom line, ends in the lake. The consummation, they go to the lake. Instead of into an immortal glorified state, a heavenly state, they're going to the lake. Satan and all his, all the souls that follow him are all going to the lake. In other words, he's ending in fire. Go to Matthew 25, 34. Yahweh Elohim has earmarked the devil for fire at the end. The, the mystery of iniquity in this earth plane, he's reserved. Mm -hmm. He's just being held here. That's why you can't change Satan or a demonic spirit. Yahweh reserved them to oppose, and he reserved them for the lake. Mm -hmm. The unrighteous them by fire. Okay, and we... Now, if you look at the Red Sea, you don't have to get all the verses. I'll quote them. Okay, go ahead. Matthew 25 and 34. Uh-huh. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, is that what you want? Yeah, yeah. Ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Keep for going. I was a hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I want you to go to 43. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Matthew 25. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You know what? It's in. It's the end of the scripture reading. 8, 13. Uh, start at 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. See, it's just like the previous speakers talked about, you have his gospel or his... His, the principles of his death, burial, resurrection by this 
pattern so that you can repeat it and repeat it and repeat it so finally it'll sink in because he never changes. And one thing I love about this time, this pattern of salvation for the Jews to make atonement so they wouldn't die, I love that salvation came from the mercy seat. And look up, look here, look up here. We talked about the witnesses. These witnesses up here correlate to the law and the prophets who have seen the Creator because Yahweh Elohim got in them. In 2 Peter 1.21, holy men of Yahweh spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. So we're back to the consummation by fire. And I want to show you that Israel was in a death-like state and the Passover lamb died for Israel because Yahweh Elohim called Israel his firstborn son. Mm -hmm. Those millions of people. He called them his firstborn son, one. And he provided that lamb so his firstborn son wouldn't get killed. Do you get that? Mm -hmm. He provided the lamb for his own chosen people so that they could get out of Egypt and come to Yahweh and worship him, and eventually be immortally glorified at the day of consummation. And Dr. Kinley said, nobody's going ahead of each other. Nobody's going ahead of each other. We're, we are all going to see the, sa the end of this age. You know what I mean? I think you want 25 and 41, Matthew. Okay. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed. Left shows iniquity because he's always left. He's left behind. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. He said you would be an everlasting fire that's been prepared for, for him. You know what I mean? So you've got that, that mystery of iniquity in here trying to deceive the Israelites when they came through here. But I want to show you down here in Egypt, and the previous speaker got Exodus 9, 16. For this power of Pharaoh have I raised you up, that I may declare, declare my name, my tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven, mm -hmm. his witnesses. Which could be us, too. Mm -hmm. We are in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. But these witnesses in the tabernacle show forth the law and the prophets. So... And they're like one-eyed jacks looking at the Creator, and they're sit he's sitting on the mercy seat to show you that salvation can only come by mercy. So let me just do real quick here. The children leave Egypt, and they get to the Red Sea. Now get Revelation 15, 3. Because a lot of people don't understand the book of Revelation. But it's really simple, because it's just Moses' vision and John's vision are really showing you the same thing from different mm -hmm. perspectives. Mm -hmm. John's talking more about the reality of things. You know, and Moses set this all up. Now, he saw it to the end, too. Mm -hmm. But these, like, are Yahweh's two witnesses, too. You know? Okay, go ahead and read that. Revelation. Revelation 15. <coughs> One, two, three. three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous. Seven angels having the seven last plagues. Well, wait a minute. Where on earth is John, the revelator, we say? I, we should say John the revelatee. Because he's receiving it, right? Read it again. <laughs> and I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous. Seven angels having the seven last plagues. Now why? Why are there seven last plagues? Did you ever think about it? Well, the first three plagues affected Yahweh's chosen as well as the Egyptians. But the seven was filled up the wrath of Yahweh. And uh, they didn't make it. It's pretty simple, right? Okay. Finish that off. Go ahead. For in them is filled up the wrath of Yahweh. Yeah, those seven glass plagues, yep. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. Now, what do you think that means? we got to climb a mountain like and see. Oh, my God, look down there. It looks so beautiful. Ice, ice. Whatever. That's not what it means. It's not physical. You know what I mean? And in Revelation 14, you'll find it's a sea of people. There's people he calls the sea. Okay? Go ahead. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast. Over the beast. Who's the beast? Satan. 
And the zim, the whole draconic beast, uh, mystery of iniquity. Go ahead. And over his image. And over his image? Yahweh Elohim's image is totally opposed to Satan's image. He is the standard for righteousness, and Satan is the antithesis of his righteousness. He's the opposite. He was created to oppose. Okay, keep going. And over his mark, and over the name, number of his name, and standing on the sea of glass. Now listen to this, it's so cool. Go ahead. Having the heart of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of Elohim. Now, if you didn't know that Yahweh's witnesses were law, prophets, mm -hmm. and fulfillment, and that he never changes, mm -hmm. Malachi 3, 6, mm -hmm. he's going to keep going in us the same principles that he manifested, right? Read that last part again. And they sing the songs of Moses. Why would they be saying at the total end? I'm sorry, Jen, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Why would they say at the total end mm -hmm. of this, Read it again. And they sing the song of Moses and the servant of Yahweh. And, and the, the song, song of the Lamb, right? And the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works. See? Yahweh Elohim, almighty, just, the true, and, uh, just and true are thy ways, and thou king of sons. Good. Who shall not fear thee, Good. O Yahweh, and glorify thy name. That's perfect. Mm. So that's... That's it in a nutshell. The Creator's telling you that the mystery of righteousness is going to be saved and the mystery of iniquity is going to be lost. But you have a, fi a principle of a fire here. Read it again in Revelation 3, or Revelation 3, 12, verse 3. And oh, they sing okay. the song. No, I'm sorry, I want to see mingled with fire. It's just up farther. Okay, two. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. Guess what that is? It's the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All the way down to John, he's looking back and he says, Huh, I see a sea mingled with fire. Weird, like smoke on the water. But it's fire! <laughs> right? So the Red Sea correlates to the lake. Because all the Egyptians who were pursuing Israel, including the head, Pharaoh, right. mm -hmm. with all his minions, 666, mm -hmm. the principle is the de devil's number, they were all captured in the Red Sea and drowned. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? And look, this sea was covered with a fiery cloud because they left at midnight. And the fiery cloud was for light by night and a regular cloud by day. And if you want to know where that is, it's Exodus 13, 18 through 21. Write it down. Like the speaker said, this is a class. Write some things down and check it out. Okay? This is a type of the lake of fire. A sea mingled with blood. Doesn't fiery cloud look red? Now, Israel came through that, but the mystery of iniquity was cut off. The consummation is going out by fire. Look, at the time of Noah, the fountains of the great deep broke up in Genesis 7. The fountains of the great deep grow up, uh, came up. That means volcanic activity, too. You know, you're moving the platelets, and a whole bunch of bad things happened when, at the time of the earth. The continents divided and stuff. So this is a type of ending by water, but there also was fire. There had to be volcanic activity because it said it came up from the sea, okay? And Israel was called a fiery furnace, and that's the place of death. Isaiah 10, and I think it's 16, that everybody's, it's going to go out by fire. Just trying to run a train to that way. Simple. Oh, no, no, never mind that. Please get, um, uh, Daniel, the third chapter, and you're going to find some of the prophets of Yahweh Elohim. I'll point you up here because I really don't, okay, this is where they are, go ahead, I'm sorry. Daniel. Three and um, I want you to pick up at one because I want you to show 
Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces. That's good. That's good. I don't have the time. Okay. But the point is that Yahshua is going to consume the wicked by fire. I mean, that's the essence I want to get across. And you see it. The creation of Moses' vision came in by a fiery cloud. It, this is all encompassed in the cloud because it shows forth Yahweh, right? So the creation came in by fire. And now, guess what? It's got to go out by fire because the end is clear from the beginning, right? But now, and you can use Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, right? Weren't they in that fiery furnace? And Yahweh Elohim, as an angel, comes down and saves them. So their hair wasn't even fringed. I mean, singed. <laughs> it, I would love it if I could talk. But, um, there, here's the trend. Okay, I just got to finish this real quick. I'll only give three witnesses. Um, in the fire, but not consumed. Right? That's the principle. Why were Yahweh's people able to go over, cross the Red Sea, and leave Pharaoh behind? Why did that happen? See what I mean? Because Yahweh set it up that way. That the righteous can pass through fire and not be consumed. Just like Israel, Yahweh's son, Get Isaiah 43, 1 through 3. The Israel, Yahweh's firstborn son went through the Red Sea. They were covered by Yahweh in the cloud and in the sea, right? And that's what made the sea look like a fiery cloud, or a fire, a lake of fire, because there was a fiery cloud reflecting on it. Okay, go ahead. Isaiah 43, 1 through mm -hmm. 3. But now thus saith Yahweh that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name. And you know Israel is just a type of Yahweh's chosen people today. Go ahead. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. When you go through the waters, I'm going to be with you. The, the sons of Yahweh, the chosen of Yahweh, are able to pass through the fire of the consummation and not be consumed. See that? That's pretty simple. No one in the family were able to pass through all the chaos in the earth plane, the rain and volcanic without being hurt. They were in that fire, but they were, they were in Yahshua, so they weren't hurt. Same thing with a, uh, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, right? They were actually put in fire, and Yahweh didn't let them bone broke. So now the reality of all this is this is like Four watches in the night, 4,000 years is equal to four watches in the night. That's Psalm 90 and 3. And you already know one day is 1,000 years, right? Mm -hmm. Well, in the, in the other place, it says that in, in the day of Yahweh's eternity, there's watches. Four watches in the night and two watches of the day. And it equals up to about 6,000 years. You know, two age, three ages in the flesh, second, third, and fourth ages. In the fire. So Yahshua Messiah, he came in right on time, and he told us how this world was going to end. Will you read that one more time? You will pass through. And when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, and they shall not overthrow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. See, his kids are going to go through the consummation successfully. Because you have to really become a Yahshua before you. It was even said in prayer, before you get out of here. Right? So here's Noah and the family. When they're in the ark, they pass through the fire and water without being consumed. Here's Israel. They're at the Red Sea. They pass through this lake of fire without being consumed. The mystery of iniquity is consumed away in that burial. It's just a death or a resurrection, like Nikki said. You know? And... 
the, the sons of Yahweh are in that fire, but they are not consumed. Now, Yahshua, how do you correlate Yahshua? If you look at the law and the prophets, by watches in the night, first, you know, four watches, 4,000 years, and then the last two, but Yahshua came in at the end of 4,000 years, right? So, what, what, how did Yahshua fulfill that? How did he fulfill in the fire and not consume? Well, you're going to find out that all of these witnesses are like a fiery cloud of witnesses. There are, well, Hebrews 12. I need to get some water. Is it, can I have a ticket? Yeah, thank you. Sure. Hebrews 12. We're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, right? Mm -hmm. We're foreseen. We also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. In the okay, same that's way. good. I just want you to see this. We're surrounded by Yahweh Elohim's witnesses. And by his mercy and his truth, we are saved, right? But Yahshua fulfilled that being in the consummation, but not of it, or passing through the fire and not being consumed. And this is how it is. The purpose all the way to Yahshua is the dark time. The four watches in the night correlate to the 4,000 years. And you know how Dr. Kinley would put the sun in the sky and Adam together and Israel the sun with the sun sky. So there he is coming down through the ages and dispensations. But all of the ones that Yahweh chose to pass through the fire, they are not consumed. And that's our only hope at the end of this age. We're right at the brink of the end. You're going to go through the consummation, but you're not going to experience it like the rest of the world does. You're not going to be consumed because you're his. It's because Yahweh Elohim is with you. Yahweh Elohim was with Noah. Yahweh Elohim was with Israel, or Yahshua. And the prophets, Yahshua was with them. And the fulfillment, Yahshua is Yahshua, and he's showing you he fulfilled every jot and tittle of this cloud of witnesses. Every jot and tittle so that you could say, yes, I'm the one. He's the one. No doubt. He is the one. Thank you very much. morning and afternoon to study with us. We will be having a pot potluck, so stick around after class. Speak louder. Speak louder. We will be having a potluck. Stick around, everyone. <laughs> we hold classes here every Sunday from 11 to 1 and every Wednesday from 7 to 9. Let's all please stand and be dismissed with the doxology taken from the last couple verses in Jude. And thank you all of our visitors as well for coming. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.